From the earliest developments of the x-ray tube to efficient modern-day medical applications, the safeguarding of personnel due to x-ray radiation exposure is acknowledged as a required precaution. Endured exposure to x-ray radiation was noted in early development by historical pioneers including Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla, William Morton, and so forth. Severe side effects inflicting the body were reported by such individuals of science, while operating vacuum tubes involving two electrodes made of heavy elements. Nikola Tesla's X-ray research of the late 1890s provides unique insight to new fields of research. It has become commonplace to label Tesla as a co-discoverer of the X-ray phenomenon, when in fact his observations with special vacuum tubes describe a beam of particles which behave like X-rays, although do not inflict harm nor render radiographic imaging to short distances. This suggests that Nikola Tesla had indeed observed a new phenomenon, although history has forgotten this while falsely attributing such observations to conventional X-rays. From Tesla's electric ray research commencing in 1894, it was not until a few months ago, more than 120 years later, that this specific realm of research seen improvement. Through rigorous experimentation, G.G. Brock Laboratories has invented and developed an improved vacuum tube, which expounds upon the groundwork laid by Nikola Tesla more than a century ago. This is the 1A21 radiating beam tube, which is the first of its kind within the Desmutron vacuum tube series. It is of patented construction, possessing minimal parts and simplistic operation. The operating principles and explanation as to how this tube is an alternative to x-rays shall be presented in two adjacent videos. For now, we will concern the overall practicality of this beam tube. To demonstrate the radiographic abilities of this Desmetron tube, I have it series connected to this full wavelength extra coil that operates at 3 megacycles exactly, which works in conjunction with this diathermy apparatus. This of which supplies adequate high frequency, high potential alternating current to the tube, which allows for the initiation and projection of specific radiant matter. The projected matter which emanates from the tube impinges upon this box in which on the other side of this panel is contained a fluorescent material, an intensifying screen that illuminates visible green wavelength light. This light is then able to be collected visually by a video camera located and encapsulated within this elongated box. The video output is then sent down a cable to an auxiliary displaying unit, such as a CRT monitor. For this purpose, we will be using a simple 8-inch Panasonic CRT monitor to receive the incoming video signal from the camera within the imaging box. As the lights are turned off, the CRT is warmed up and prepared to display. Then supplying the disruptive discharge power to the tube, do we see signs of radio frequency interference presenting itself. Although an isolation transformer is employed between the main supply and the diathermy apparatus, local RFI emission at close range impinges the CRT quality without proper shielding. Using this setup as a method for seeing moving radiographic images or fluoroscopy, we may place various objects in front of the beam, such as this electronic meter or a denser object as this analog milliampere meter. A packaged box of vacuum tubes is no challenge for the emitted particles even at great distances away from the tube. There being a lack of hurtful effects with the Desmetron tube, one supposes the medical benefits of such a device. Likewise, the industrial application of the Desmetron tube allows for the photographing of materials and objects at exceedingly distant points, unheard of with conventional X-ray methods. We may see through human extremities at distances of more than 6 and 8 feet away, or enclosed packages at 15 feet and more than but not limited to 20 feet away. These impressions made on standard high-speed X-ray film display the remarkable attributes of the Desmetron tube. 
While we are not dealing with damaging x-rays, but rather highly accelerated particles, there exists no bound to maximum distance which may be obtained with such a tube. Rather, the limit becomes the power supply and its ability to produce maximum power. Continued research is underway at G.G. Brock Laboratories, where new experimental evidence will be shown in videos to follow.